In this video, we'll build a modern gradient landing page with HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, and Font Awesome. Okay guys, so let's take a look at the full screen modern gradient landing page that we're going to build in this video, which as you see will take up 100% of the height and 100% of the width no matter what size the devices were on. And as you'll see, as we span the width of the device up in size, the font awesome icons as well as the headings will resize depending on the device. Okay, so before we get started by taking a look at the files that I've prepared for this tutorial, my goal for this video is to get up to 90 likes. And if you like the video, remember to subscribe and turn on your notifications for new tutorials. Also, leave a comment to let me know what you think and what type of video you'd like to see in the future. So in the description of this video will be the starter files that I prepared for the tutorial and I'm going to be using the free program called Visual Studio Code throughout the video. And if you'd like to learn more about the text editor that we'll be using, you can use the 12 website bundle file here as a link to my website using the image or the button which acts as links where I'm promoting the website designs from my website w3newbie.com. Then once you're there, check out the resources link in the menu and on the left hand side, you'll see that there's a Visual Studio Code text editor lesson where you'll find a video as well as links to the extensions that I use and all of my settings directly from my setup of the text editor. Also, the landing page that we'll be building today comes from one of the websites that's included as a bonus to the 12 website bundle pack, which you see in the middle. So if the bonus designs interest you, be sure to check out the 12 website bundle pack. Okay, so moving over to Visual Studio Code, I have open in the text editor index.html, as you see here, as well as the style.css file. And if you'd like to learn about all that's included here in the head section, be sure to check out one of my complete website tutorials. For now, I'll just mention that we have a Google font added for us already from fonts.google.com. And in addition to that, we have a file set up to display our icons from an icon library called Font Awesome. So you can go to fontawesome.com or if you check out the customization resources on my website, there's a link to Font Awesome from there. Then once we're on Font Awesome's website, if we just do a search for globe, we'll be able to see all of the different icons that we'll be using in this video, where we have the different globes per continent, as you see right here, with the free available icons. Then in style.css, we have a reset style to prevent horizontal overflow as well as the font from Google Fonts added for us already. And in addition to that, we have some media queries started for us already where we'll have the different breakpoints of the responsiveness with the text and the icons resizing and taking different shapes as you see with the width. Also at the very bottom, we have a cheat sheet for the different bootstrap breakpoints, which is the responsive CSS framework we'll be using to build our landing page. Okay, so with that, let's move back over to index.html and, we'll, and we're gonna get started just underneath the start landing header comment. But first, let's turn on the live server feature with Visual Studio Code, and that's gonna open up a blank page in Chrome. So the first thing that we'll do is let's add an element that we'll use to display the gradient background color down to the bottom of that background shade. So we're just going to call this div class landing by using the period and then landing, which um, Visual Studio Code is going to take care of filling out as the div class. Then inside of that, we'll add an element that we'll use to center the content with our headings as well as the font awesome icons and center it vertically. So we're just going to call this div class content. Then also with this, we're going to use a class from Bootstrap to center all of our text, which is simply called text dash center. And then we're also going to make our text uppercase and we're going to make our text light in color or white with the text light class. So now that that's set, let's add our headings inside of here before we add the icon, starting with the heading four, where it says modern design concepts. So I'll add the heading four tag, then modern design concepts. And the classes that we added previously will take care of the uppercase characters. Then underneath that, we'll add a heading one with the text, welcome to our website. So now if we take a look at the text in Chrome, we're not going to be able to see it because it's white in color. So before we do anything else, let's add the gradient background color. Then we can come back to adding the icons. So let's reference our landing class here underneath the landing CSS comment. 
and to add the gradient background, we'll use background image instead of background or background color. Then we'll add linear gradient and we're going to go sort of top left to bottom right, which is a 135 degree angle. So 135 or 135 DEG for degree, comma, and then we'll add the top left color, which is 1DA, 1F2, followed by the bottom right color, which is the hex value 981CEB. So now if we save it, we'll be able to see the gradient background, but only taking up the height of the content that we added. So let's add height, 100 vertical height, so it takes up 100% of the landing page. So now in order to make it so it actually appears like a landing page with the content or space underneath, let's add some blank space using internal style inside of index.html. So let's go down and I'll just add a class called class or CLAS, whatever we want to call it. And then we'll give it an internal style with the height, 100 vertical height, similar to what we did with the landing class itself. Okay, so now with the landing page background set as well as the height, let's add our icons that appear underneath the headings, starting with the row and the columns that will nest the font awesome icons inside of them. So let's drop down underneath the heading four and heading one. And since we're using the Bootstrap CSS framework, we're going to use a row which will contain our columns. So let's add the row class. Then let's also add a class we'll call home in order to style the font awesome icons, which is a non bootstrap class. And then since our columns won't take up the full width of the page, we're going to use a class called justify content center, which will center our columns inside of the row. Then with the columns that we'll be adding inside of the row, we're going to be, we'll be adjusting the width of the columns depending on the screen width itself. But there's one breakpoint where we're going to use some margin in order to assist the width of the columns so they're not too wide. And that's going to be at the medium screen breakpoint, which is 768 pixels. So in order to add 3 rem or 48 pixels of margin on either side, we're going to use a bootstrap class called px-md-5. Then once we get up to the next breakpoint at 992 pixels, we're going to have the columns take care of the layout themselves without the padding. So we're going to use a class to remove the padding on the large screen width by saying px-lg-0. Okay, so now with our row set, we're ready to add our first column and using the bootstrap CSS framework, being that it's mobile first, we're going to go from the narrowest of screens up to the widest. So with the smallest of screens, we're going to have four columns as we do the widest. So naturally, we'll want to use up three out of 12 available columns with the bootstrap grid system. So we have 12 columns to work with, which we can break up on all of these different device widths, which we have the cheat sheet for in style.css. So we'll use col-3 as our class to take up three out of the available 12 columns at the smallest screen. Then once we get up to 576 pixels, which is the small screen width, we're going to use up two out of the available columns because it's going to drop in width as you'll see. So once we get up to 576 right there, we'll use up two out of the 12 available columns, as I said. That way we have some space left off to the sides and we can keep the overall width of our icons narrow. So the next breakpoint would be at 768 pixels, but we're not going to change the column width here. If you remember, we're going to add the additional margin off to the sides, which will then be removed once we get up to the large screen width at 992 pixels, which is the col-lg class. So also at this width, we're going to decrease the size of the column once more, down to one out of the available 12 columns with col-lg-1. Then one additional step that we're going to take at the large screen width of 992 pixels is removing all of the padding that's added to the columns naturally with Bootstrap by using the p-0 class. That way the icons can take up more of the column width. Okay, so now with our column set, we're ready to add the font awesome icon stack that appears inside of it. So let's go back over to fontawesome.com and I'm going to select the first globe that we'll be using, which is the Africa globe. And remember, you can copy the icon link just by clicking on it. But before we do that, I'm going to go over to their documentation and drop down to the stacking icons link, which you see on the right sidebar. And this is going to give us some examples that we could work from. So since we're going to be using the circle icon, let's go with the second one down where we see the FA stack 
with the circle and the flag. So I'm going to copy that and then let's go back over to the landing page and I'll paste it inside of the column. So now if we save this, we're going to see that we have the circle appearing, but it's appearing in all white because we have the text light class added up here. So if we go and remove that, we'll be able to see the flag appear and have a dark background. So with that, now we can go ahead and add the globe-africa icon. So I'll write fa-globe-africa. And now when we save it, we'll be able to see that icon appear. So now with the first column and icon set, what we can do is copy this column entirely and then paste it underneath three times for the three remaining globes. Then once we have all of these pasted in, let's change the globes to what they're going to be in the finished version. So that's going to be Globe Asia for the second one. Then for the third, we have Globe Americas. And then the last one is Globe Europe. So now if we take a look, there we have all of our globes set up underneath the headings. So we're almost ready to add the CSS, but first let's add the text-light class back. And for now, we're going to have the icons white in color, but we'll be able to correct that in just a moment in the CSS. So with all of our HTML set, let's add CSS that will make it so our content will be centered on the page. So underneath the landing class CSS, what we're going to do is center our content vertically by targeting the content class that we added back in index.html. So let's add the content class here in style.css. Then we're going to give it position absolute so we can place it wherever we want on the page. And then top 45%, which is going to place it pretty much center on the page, except for it's going to be a little bit lower. So what we'll do is we're going to move it up the page 50% of its own height with a style declaration called transform translate y, meaning the vertical axis negative 50%. Then to center it on the page, we're going to give it width 100%. So once we save it, we'll have our content centered on the page and we're ready to start styling our headings followed by the icons. So let's start off with the heading 4 tag. So we'll be able to just reference the h4 tag here since we'll only reference the heading 4 once. Then let's increase the font size by writing font size to rem and in addition to that we're going to decrease the font weight down to a really light font weight using the google font that we added with 200 so we'll say font weight 200 and that's going to look pretty close to the original except for we're also going to space the letters out slightly so next let's drop down and add letter spacing 0.1 rem and in addition to this, we're going to add a slight text shadow to it as well. So we'll add a text shadow of 0.1 rem horizontal radius, 0.1 rem vertical, as well as the blur. And then we'll add red, green, blue, alpha, all black with zeros, followed by 0.2 to give it a 20% transparency for the text shadow. Okay, so now with our heading 4 set, let's drop down and style the heading 1 text where it says welcome to our website. So with the heading 1, we're going to be using much of the same style declarations as the heading 4. So what we can do is simply copy the style for the heading 4 and paste that underneath. Then I'm going to change the h4 to an h1. And let's increase the font size to 3.6 rem and increase the letter spacing to 0.2 rem. Then let's also add some space to the top and bottom of the heading one to separate it from the heading four as well as the icons underneath. So we'll add padding, top bottom 1.8 rem, and zero left right. So now if we take a look, we'll be matching up to the original pretty closely except for the size of the text is a little smaller on the original because we're gonna resize it in the media query CSS later. But for now, let's go and start styling the icons. So let's start by resizing the icons. And we're going to use the FA stack FA2X class to resize the icons, or classes, I should say, because those are going to target both the circle as well as the globes that are inside of the circle. So let's move over to style.css and we'll add FA stack FA2X. Just make sure that there aren't any spaces in between them. 
then we'll increase the font size to 2.8 rem. So now the size will be matched up to the original at the widest of screen. So if I span up a little bit, that will be the size that it will match up to. Then in order to make it so we can see the globe and we're not just seeing one big white circle, what we're going to do is decrease the opacity of the circle portion of the stack by targeting the FA-Stack2X class. So once we do that, let's add opacity 0.15. So we're only seeing 15% of the circle color. So now it's going to look pretty transparent and it's going to make it so we can see the white globes. But now in order to make it so the white globes except for the Americas globe aren't displaying at full opacity, what we can do is copy the FA stack 2 x class and change it to FA1X. Then we'll make it an opacity of 0.7. So we're seeing 70% of the white shade. Then in order to change the size and the color of the Americas globe itself, we're going to target that class specifically. So back in index.html, let's copy the FA-globe-Americas class. Then we'll go back to style.css and paste that class in. And we're going to give this an opacity of 1. So we'll see the white color in full. And now if we take a look, we'll see that it's separate from the others with the full opacity. But let's increase the size with transform scale 1.25. So we're going to increase the size by 25% of the other icons. So with that, we have the full width CSS all set for the landing page and we're ready to move on to the media queries when we're going to change the size of our headings as well as the icons as we span the screen down in width. So we're going to start at the extra large screen breakpoint with bootstrap at 1200 pixels and target the heading one as well as the FA stack FA2X class for the icon. So we'll resize the heading one as well as the icons for the first breakpoint. And let's resize the heading one to 3.3 rem. Then let's decrease the font awesome stack to 2.5 rem. So now if we save it and take a look in Chrome, let's toggle back and forth. And the finished version, it looks like the font awesome icons are actually a little bit smaller. So let's decrease them by 0.2 rem down to 2.3 rem. And now if we toggle back and forth, it should match up. Okay, so that looks good until we get down to the next breakpoint, which is the large 992 pixel mark, where we'll want to decrease the size of the heading for the heading one and the font awesome icons. So what we can do is copy the same CSS, but before we apply the changes, let's add the heading for CSS, and we're gonna decrease the font size from two rem down to 1.8 rem so we'll decrease this by 0.2 rem and then we can paste in the h1 and we'll decrease the font size of the heading one down to 2.5 rem and the font size for the font awesome icons to 1.8 rem okay so now once we're saved we'll be matching up until we get down to the last breakpoint which is the 768 pixel mark where we're going to leave the font size of the icons the same, but we'll decrease the heading one and the heading four text size. So let's go back to style.css and then we can copy the heading one and the heading four font size and paste that in below. And let's decrease the heading four font size to 1.5 rem and the heading one to two rem. So now if we save it and take a look at the landing page, here we have the completed, responsive, full screen, modern gradient landing page displaying just like the original. And as we resize it, we'll see that the heading one, heading four and font awesome icons are responsive like the original design. So I wanna thank you for watching. Remember to like this video, subscribe, and turn on your notifications for new tutorials. And I'll see you in the next one.